In this episode, we're going to be providing you nine solid tips to avoid scams when purchasing jewelry. Yes, when you're purchasing jewelry, it's a very big ticket item. You're using your real wages, your real salary, your real savings to make a commitment on a piece of jewelry that you will love to wear or you will love to gift to somebody else. So if that is the case, here are nine tips in today's episode on how you can avoid being scammed. So number one, research and verify what do i mean by research and verify well first and foremost what you want to do is research the jeweler research the seller do the digging ask your friends and family look at testimonials go online and take a look at their ratings see what they are selling who they are how long they've been around do they have any credentials Make sure you research and verify. Again, this episode is talking about how you will not get scammed. How can you avoid from being scammed when purchasing jewelry? So the most important thing is, number one, make sure you research and verify the person, the company, the people that you are buying your jewelry from. It is extremely important, and there's so much information online for you to do that research. Number two, trustworthy sources now this is very similar to doing your research okay as number one the difference is that now that you've done your research who are these people that you're working with are they an authorized retailer are they a company that is associated with a very specific jewelry association do they have any credibility do they have credentials how long have they been around are they involved with any kind of jewelry organizations are they linked or partnered with any bigger companies that are more well known how well established are they once you've done your research you want to make sure that this company that you're working with is a trustworthy source in addition to that are they using very specific payment transaction processes to ensure that your transaction is going to be safe from scams so once again you've done your research and verify you want to make sure that you're working with a trust worthy source number three knowledge is power what do i mean by that well before you buy anything you want to make sure that you use the power of the internet and do a little bit of research on the product that you are purchasing so regardless if you're trying to buy a watch a necklace earrings moissanite diamonds whatever it is you may want to actually look into it. So for example, if you're trying to find a diamond or you're trying to buy a moissanite or you're trying to buy a lab diamond, you may want to do a little bit of research on the four C's. The cut, the color, the clarity, and the carrot weight. Once you know about the product more and once you do a little bit of research on who's selling the product and what the product is about, once you do start shopping, then you will know whether or not A, item that is being sold to you sounds too good to be true because many times when it sounds too good to be true it normally is so and then at the same time you will also be able to recognize whether a price sounds too good to be true or if the price is inflated so again make sure you study the product because knowledge is power Number four, certificate of authenticity. What do I mean by this? Many times when you purchase a big ticket item when it comes to jewelry, for example, a diamond, you want to make sure that you're purchasing a diamond that comes with a certificate from a gemological laboratory. For example, the Gemological Institute of America. Many GIA certified diamonds will come with a certificate where the inscription on the certificate will match with the inscription on the diamond. So if you're going to spend 10, 20, 30, 50 thousand dollars on a diamond, you want to make sure that it comes with a certificate of authenticity. In this case, a laboratory gemological laboratory certificate to validate the diamond that you're purchasing all right so number five what you want to do is you want to make sure when you are purchasing jewelry regardless if you're purchasing it online or at a brick and mortar walk-in store that whoever is taking your payment they're using a secured third-party transaction service so for example most of the times many people nowadays they don't usually pay in cash anymore you will usually pay with your credit card right so your credit card company especially if it's actually a bigger credit card company uh, many times they should have a way of protecting your transaction from fraud or scammers but in addition to that you want to make sure that the company that you're working with 
also uses very secure transaction methods to make sure that your payments are protected when you're transacting and purchasing a large ticket item such as jewelry. If you like what you've learned so far, make sure you hit that like button and share this channel for other people that may want to look for this information. So number six is the return and warranty policies. So anytime you are actually purchasing jewelry, regardless if it's online or in store, walk in brick and mortar or whoever it is that you're buying from, any jeweler, any seller, any person, make sure that you fully understand and read the return, the exchange, and the warranty policy. Anyone that is selling you a big ticket item such as jewelry that is reluctant to give you clear and concise warranty, exchange, or return policies, make sure you are also reluctant from buying from them because you wanna make sure that you protect yourself again from scammers, again from being scammed. So anytime you are ready to place a big purchase ticket item, Make sure that you understand these policies and it is clear and concise. Number seven. So if you are going to be purchasing pre-owned jewelry or pre-loved jewelry or basically vintage and antique jewelry that's been handed down uh, and for example, many people do go to a pawn shop to purchase some jewelry. Many people will go to a jewelry store that sells pre-loved, pre-owned jewelry. You want to make sure that you can authenticate this pre-owned jewelry. How do you know that that is truly white gold? How do you know that is that metal is truly made of platinum? How do you know if those gemstones are truly diamonds? How do you know if these items were made in 1893 as opposed to 1993? If you are purchasing pre-owned jewelry, it is important that you seek for a third-party service such as an appraiser that knows how to appraise jewelry. If you seek for a professional person that understands how to look at pre-loved, pre-owned jewelry to authenticate it so that you know the items that you're buying is not misrepresented and you are getting exactly what you're paying for. Number eight, price comparison. I cannot emphasize this enough. Price comparison. When you are comparing prices when purchasing jewelry, many jewelry items are very similar. Many jewelry items can be compared and may look very simple, similar, but it is also important that you compare prices because jewelry, if it is made of 14K white gold and another item is also made of 14K white gold and you're setting the exact same gemstone on each, sometimes when something sounds too good to be true, it normally is. So just because it looks the same, it does not necessarily mean that it is the same. Sometimes some rings, some necklaces, some chains, some earrings can be hollow. So even though it looks the same, the amount of metal used inside of the jewelry is not the same. The weight is different. And when the weight is different, it should cost more. So again, when you're comparing prices, make sure you're comparing apples to apples because there's many times, especially here at Fire and Brilliance, where we will hear from customers where they complain about jewelry they bought from somewhere else. And they basically said they thought they got a great deal, but eventually they realized they didn't because the metal was hollow, because the gemstones they used were of a lower quality. And they just looks the same because it's on picture as opposed to it being the same, right? So it's extremely important that you understand that when you're comparing prices, you're also comparing an item and comparing apples to apples and not apples to oranges, okay? So make sure you ask all of the right questions, going back to number one and two, working with a trusted source and doing a lot of verifying and authenticating when you're researching for a specific jeweler to work with. So that when you are purchasing the jewelry, even though it may sound or feel as if you're paying more for the same item, in reality, you're actually not because you're actually getting more bang for your buck. You may be paying a little more for your item, but your jewelry is more solid. It is not hollow. It is actually made of real diamonds. It's made of high quality gemstone. It is made of high quality moissanite. It's made of, of, of high quality lab grown diamonds. It's made of white gold, yellow gold, rose gold, platinum, palladium, and it's not hollow or plated. Okay. So again, when comparing prices, make sure that you know you're comparing apples to apples. Okay, last but not least, trust your instincts. When something sounds too good to be true, it normally is. So 
do not feel rushed to get into purchasing anything, especially if you are not comfortable. Okay, make sure you consult with your more experienced friends or family that's purchased it before or make sure you consult with anyone that you may know that may be in the industry or going back to number one and two, do a lot of research, make sure that you're working with a trusted source so that when you're working with somebody that it doesn't always sound too good to be true. It sounds a little more realistic because many times if you are going to get scammed. A lot of scammers will use tactics that is high pressure, that you have to buy it now. They make you feel as if you must make the decision now or you're not going to get it. Those types of tactics are used by many scammers to make you feel like you have to make the purchase now or you're going to lose out on the deal. What you wanna do is just take a step back, slow down, think about it, evaluate it, work with someone that you can trust, talk to some friends and family members that have experience in it, and then make that decision. So trust your gut, trust your instincts. So those are the nine tips on in terms of how you're going to be avoid being scammed. And if you're in the market looking for chains or looking for ways to layer your jewelry, you missed last week's episode, make sure you click here. It shows you tips on how you can layer your jewelry.